Hey guys, it's Julesy, and I'm finally getting around to discussing the much requested Netflix series by Avery DuVernay. Girl, we late, but we just want to name this series the Late Review Series because. I ain't gonna do nothing but take my time. I'm finally reviewing the Netflix series by Ava DuVernay, When They See Us. It really didn't take me that long to get around to watching the series. I watched it maybe a week after it came out, but digesting and processing it, oof. Now that, that, that was a lot. Now if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and stick around for the bevy of critical dialogues we host over on these parts. Hit that bell for notifications so you never miss a post. And let's get into this discussion. First, I wanna to touch on people who are reluctant to watch this four part series. I mean, I hope by now that maybe people have like given up on their reluctance and I mean, I mean at least watch like a couple, I mean, there's four parts. So maybe like the first, I mean, just at least watch some part of it because I really do believe that this is necessary viewing. There's no way to deny the influence of the media we absorb. And while I understand that people prefer to watch what is lighthearted or humorous or fantastical because they want to escape, however briefly, the mm, perils of the world they live in, you know, I, I still believe that when they see us, it's vital because it humanizes the story. It humanizes the whole of the story, touching on all the parts and people that cause the trauma trauma and all the parts and people that suffer from the trauma. And the way this film informs you really will stick with you much deeper than any Twitter or Facebook post or news story with another black body that becomes a phantom to state violence. You know, none of the men, their mothers, fathers, and families are left to be phantoms. Names we may know, but people we never saw or felt. And I would stress that everyone should watch this and maybe just break it up across weeks, watch it early in the day so you can watch something else funny after. But you know, I'm gonna I'm 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 make a real firm statement. I ain't really trying to argue with you, but you know, it's one of them, I said what I said things. But no one who is skipping out on this series is nearly as informed on the structure of the prison system and the players that ensure it is so easy for us to get and stay entangled. No one who is skipping out on this is as informed as they would like to claim. And so I think this is, mm, Take one for the team, but this is necessary viewing. But this is this wasn't meant to be an argument, so let's get into the actual review and the production. Huh. Everything about this, from the production, from the cinematography, the lighting, the way the camera follows the characters, the script, and the storyline being so fluid and emotionally captivating, girl, even for the elements that we already knew the outcome on, like <gasps> I was still like on the edge of my seat. You were really just pulled into this film. It was phenomenal acting across the board. And maybe what makes it so hard to watch, besides the actual content of the story, is that there's nothing distracting. You know, you were really fully immersed in every element of the story. And I think that just speaks to how well every layer of this production was so well thought out and done. So it's four parts, as I've said before, and we start with the night of April 19th, 1989. We see the boys go from their homes in Harlem down into the uptown entrance of Central Park at 116th Street. You know, the pacing is really efficient because it really struck with me how regular regular degular every day these boys were and how it really went from them each living typical teenager lives and if for anyone familiar with early 1990s New York and even the New York City that I lived in in the early 2000s you know the rowdiness and essentially the violence that we did see on screen wasn't anything extreme that warranted 7 to 15 years spent in prison. How quickly this mundaneness turns into the worst day of these five unfortunate boys lives. It was just so adroitly handled in how we see the boys as exactly who and what they are children. Now, because so often the image of young boys is painted as a 15 year old being an adult, uh, leaving the privilege of a 15 year old to be a child to the white boys only. But here we do get into the pathology of the criminal justice system, entangling not only these boys, but their family. From Antron's father and his own entrapment with having a record and how he transferred his powerlessness onto his son. In a sincere moment of like misguided protection, Yusuf's mother seemingly having her wits about her like you really thought she was gonna roll up and like you know okay we about to like get one out and still not really being able to protect her child and and that's no indictment on her own capabilities as a mother <laughs> it's just like how you can be the mother you're meant to be you could be about your child you could be there for them and as black people in this system we are just so at a serious 
I mean, the system was basically meant to keep us enslaved. And so we get every strain of hopelessness in each of the parents, Corey's mother, Raymond's father, Kevin's sister. Nothing was left for us to make simplified assumptions about parents abandoning their children. Oh, you know, if only they were this or if only they were educated. It's more or less the click of the system that performs as it's intended to. And I don't know how anyone can walk away from any part of this and they're not saying abolish the prison system. Well, when they see us nails down the magnitude of devastation that the loophole of the 13th Amendment allows, I am just sincerely, truly mystified by how well done this was. Even though we know the outcome, it still invoked, at least for me, a very emotional reaction to the testimony and the work Oh, and even some of the lacking of the lawyers, more so the work and the way they play out these court cases and the, I think it was mostly done in the first episode, right? The way they play out and they pan out the court cases and how the prosecution worked and how the defense attorneys work and still like leaving you with some sort of like hope and like holding your breath to hear the verdict. The scene where they give the verdict is so galvanic. Like I knew he was going to be guilty and I know these boys are losing the rest of their childhood and I was still holding my breath like I was still waiting like I still thought there was a possibility and like somehow the history that I'm already familiar with can change. Ava DuVernay worked with Bradford Young as director of photography who has also worked on most of her previous films with her and I really appreciate when the lens captures the beauty of the everyday black life. It invokes an intrigue into the mundane, making it like dynamic. This really was, I don't know, I kind of want to say morbidly beautiful. I, on another note, I am so very happy the music director was a black person, Chris Bowers, because it almost never is even for black ass projects that hit the mainstream. You know, like even for Ryan Coogler and Barry Jenkins and Donald Glover and Issa too. You know, original scoring and music licensing is almost always a white man or white person with a few caveats here and there. So shout out to Chris Browers because I thought the music also was well handled in this production. So let me get into the actual Central Park Five. Now I've already touched on how this tapped into the destruction of the families and, and I'm gonna link down below articles about the impact of mass incarceration that have highlighted particularly how it burdened and therefore devastated and you know the heightenedness of mass incarceration as, as a whole devastated the black family. Part of that is because our criminal justice system them is a largely and especially the prisons are they're for-profit enterprises visiting the jails the commissaries the calls the most basic ways you can keep in touch with a loved one who's incarcerated there's almost no way in which that will not cost you money a two-minute phone call is twenty dollars incarcerated people are moved around the penitentiary system to faraway prisons and it just continually compounds itself and all of this is highlighted throughout when they see us you see it when we talk about Corey's mother and her trying to not being able to see her son, the cost to Yusuf and particularly Antron's parents and family, the resentment it leads to with the parents and who they, who their partners are and how that plays out in their family. You know, I just really appreciate that like all these little nuances were so tastefully handled and touched upon. And then we get an entire episode dedicated to Corey Wise. Mm. Episode four takes down everybody everybody. I definitely cried and I would I would say definitely pace yourself here on this one for real. Jerome Jerome acted his behind off and all the confession tapes from the Central Park Five are up on YouTube. You can watch Corey's actual tape and it is I mean it's heartbreaking enough of a word to encapsulate like the kind of blow you feel in watching it. It is so very obvious that Corey has some sort of learning disability. You can see it in the tapes and that he was the one who was not even on the list at all only went to protect his friend Yusuf and then being ends up being the only one tried as an adult and therefore well because he was 16 years old and therefore the one who spends the most time in prison and also the one who ends up with the lo loneliest experience while incarcerated because his mother was probably the most economically disadvantaged at least the way they show it in the series didn't seem to have the familial structure that allowed her carry this blow of having her child incarcerated and it seemed to have devastated her a bit more it really is this compounding of what we know is a unnecessary evils and that this is exactly how the system is supposed to work you know Corey never got bail he ended up in Rikers and in other prisons this happens for so many 
people, it really just leads me to abolish the prison system, like bring the whole of it down. I would definitely suggest, um, if you haven't before, listening to the third season of the Serial Podcast where they go to Cuyahoga County, which I believe is in Cleveland, Ohio, and they look at the, well, the entire third season is about them looking at the criminal justice system in that county. They start a little broad and then they end up focusing on particularly the juvenile justice system. And essentially the pipeline and how it ensnares and entangles these particularly young boys into the adult prison system and they follow one case and I'll see if I can link like an article overview because I think a lot of the articles focused on this one judge who was really invested in the carceral state and and would deny people who showed up in his courtroom the chance for rehabilitation but the one story that really just stick with me was the case of a young man and I think they named him Joshua in the series and he was caught up in the juvenile system and agreed to a bargain <laughs> that the authorities did not keep up with. He was essentially abandoned by the same people who claimed to protect him. He put his life at risk and this kind of quagmire really tripled over itself and he ends up in adult prison. And they do a really good job of like following all the systems and all the webs that are connected to this, this one boy and how, you know, even when people try to save him who don't necessarily have the authority to, they aren't able to get him out even though he absolutely deserves to be let go or set free. And so I think Serial does a really good job of the investigation on that and looking in highlighting that story. So I say all the time, I think the podcast and the season, the story of Joshua is very tangent to When They See Us, but I still feel like with When They See Us, seeing this series, like it doesn't at any moment let you push this in the back of your mind. It makes it much harder to deduce these children to the villainous characters of wilding predators. <laughs> And for many of us, I would even say that it reminds us of how in the black community of respectability politics of that era of the early 90s, how some of our own language and reference to poor black families, single mother households, the children from these families, how we partially absorb the belief that black children were out of control, regardless of how you have grown in your understanding of black liberation where you were in the 90s if you were even alive. I think one thing we do definitely see in this film is that pushing these black children into prison was not a way to reform them. If at any point we've ever fed into that belief, even if only partly, that a carceral state would save us, I think maybe now we understand that it really was only ever meant to enslave us. And we understand how far it's carried us since the um, 13th Amendment was ratified in the 1860s. Uh, I gotta give a side note for Daisha getting all the Netflix acting gigs, Sisters and Russian Doll, Orange is the New Black. I think I done seen her in something else and now when they see us, she is very booked and busy. I know everyone's talking about young Raymond Santana, um, the young man who played him, post his prison system. If that's y'all type, that's y'all type. I mean, I think he was attractive. I get it. I think just every element of this storyline, it was just so, you really get like how like every day these experiences be can become. And that to me is terrifying. That this really just speaks to an entire generation, black community who was ensnared in mass incarceration. I think it really forces us to be more compassionate and hopefully more invested in deconstructing the prison complex system in reforming the criminal justice system, but just understanding how much the system was not meant for us and being active in taking it down. I really, really hope that's what you walk away from. Aside from that, that's really all my notes. I'm trying to think, do I have anything else? It's just a lot. So I'm sure I'm missing something, but uh, I really, 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 really think it, you know, I keep saying I hope you walk away with the understanding of the abolish the prison system, but I really think even showing that once these boys got out, that how much their lives were devastated from this and the lives of their families, you know, and how like much of a heart disheartening burden this was. I appreciate them discussing um, Corey's trans sister. And what I appreciate a lot is, I keep talking about the mundaneness of black people, but I say, I think we're getting into a newer era where, where the representation we get in media has more diversity. You know, like I love Queen Sugar, which I think is like one of the most boring, best shows on TV. But this ability to see black women, and even with She's Gotta Have It, which I'm gonna do a review on later, but even with that, being able to see like that 
black characters don't always have to live to like this Cosby standard of like likability and relatableness. I love the way it was very real to the story of well maybe these black mothers didn't really always get along with each other, weren't supportive of each other, that some of this had their own ills and demons to deal with, that they were not perfect, that they had their own trauma, that they were trying to excise themselves from Raymond Santana's father and how that played into the family and that the family wasn't always have your back on it and that this really really there really is a ripple effect when someone goes to prison and I don't think we necessarily have understood how much this has devastated a community and not simply the individuals who were incarcerated and so I just appreciate the depth and the vastness that when they see us really gets into with how they tell this story of well now the exonerated five and I'm happy we're all on it if you want to know I got the shirt Raymond Santana has what Park Madison NYC so I thought that was a my one way of being able to support after watching the series and really appreciating the story and how how much care was given to it so let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts were on it and i will holla later deuces